Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're talking about arguments for the existence of God, and this time, we'll discuss the ontological argument. Now, there are actually many different ontological arguments, and many of them work well in their own way. I'll be describing just one first. However, there is one term in this argument that may be unfamiliar, so I want to address it first. Maximally great. As great as it's logically possible to be. Now, on to the argument itself. There are quite a few premises in this one. Premise 1. It's possible for a maximally great being to exist. Premise 2. If it's possible for such a being to exist, then a maximally great being exists in some possible world. Premise 3. If such a being exists in some possible world, then it exists in every possible world. Premise 4. If such a being exists in every possible world, then it exists in the actual world. Premise 5. If such a being exists in the actual world, then a maximally great being exists. Conclusion. Therefore, a maximally great being exists. Now let's look at the evidence for the premises. Premise 1. The first premise only deals with what's possible, so unless it's impossible for a maximally great being to exist, the premise is true. In that sense, there's just no good reason for thinking that this premise is false. The idea of a maximally great being is a perfectly coherent and consistent one, and there doesn't seem to be anything about it that would contradict anything we see in the world around us. It would be more reasonable, therefore, to agree that the first premise is correct. Premise 2. There's nothing about this premise that requires much explaining or defending. It's virtually a definition of the term possible world. Premise 3. If a being is maximally great, that means that its existence is as great as it's logically possible to be. A being with a necessary existence is greater than a being with a merely contingent existence. Therefore, a maximally great being would have a necessary existence. However, having a necessary existence means that there's no state of affairs that would lead to it not existing. For example, there's no possible world in which 2 and 2 don't equal 4, because that's a necessary truth. In the same way, any entity with a necessary existence would exist no matter what the world was like. Premise 4. Our world is a possible world because it exists. If it were impossible, it wouldn't be able to exist. Therefore, any being that exists in all possible worlds exists in the actual world. Premise 5. Like premise 2, there's not a whole lot here that needs to be unpacked. This is virtually the definition of what it means to exist in the actual world. Conclusion. As long as all five of these premises are true, the conclusion follows from them. This seems like a very good argument. What kinds of objections could be brought against it? Objection 1. You can't just define God into existence. Reply. Quite true. But the definition of God isn't the source of his existence, so the ontological argument isn't trying to define God into existence, but rather discern God's existence through an analysis of the definition of a maximally great being. Objection 2. If there were a maximally great being, we'd all be able to see him from here. Therefore, a maximally great being doesn't exist. Reply. This is simply misunderstanding what it means to be maximally great. Certainly, size is one factor in greatness, but it's not the only one. Excellence, for example, is another, and power is a third. Therefore, a being who has the power to shield others from its full size and magnificence would be greater than one who has no such power. Also, it could be argued that physical size or even physical presence isn't a required aspect of maximal greatness. Objection 3. Just because something can exist doesn't mean it has to. For example, it's possible for a blue duck to exist, but it doesn't need to. Reply. This is because blue ducks don't have a necessary existence. Maximally great beings do. Certainly, there are many, many things that might not have existed, but none of them have necessary existences, and that's the missing ingredient in this objection. With contingent things, sure, things might exist in one possible world, but not in another. However, necessary things, like numbers, exist in every possible world, as long as it's even possible for them to exist at all. Objection 4. Something about the logic here seems off to me. Couldn't I just use the same kind of logic to prove that God doesn't exist because a maximally great being doesn't exist in at least one possible world? Reply. Yes, you could, 
if you could really prove that. I've never seen it done, but in any case, that's not really a weakness in the argument. It just proves that if the facts were different, the same logic would lead to different conclusions, which is pretty obviously true. So it follows that God, defined as maximally great, exists. Next time, can the nature of motion teach us anything about God? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.